Hello, Facebook. Good morning, Facebook. Or actually, good afternoon. Wow, it's almost 1 o'clock already. Where has my day gone? Um, it is 1245, October 15th, and um, it's showing me live now. You know, I never know when I exactly go live because it circles here on the circles and circles, and um, it appears that I'm live, but then all of a sudden it pops up and says, you're now live. So I always never know when it actually starts. So let's see if my sound is working. Um, so it's October 15th, middle of October. And let's see, there, was, there we go. My sound is working. Got a couple people logging on. If you're tuning in, drop me a comment, hashtag live, as this bee flies right near me. So um, drop a comment, hashtag live, uh, or hashtag replay on the replay. Um, it looks like it's going to be a great weekend. Um, let's see, phone call. Um, I gotta answer this really quick. Hi, I'm on Facebook Live. Hello? Well, didn't hit it. Hello? Hello? Hi, I'm on Facebook Live. Okay, bye. There's our daughter, Courtney. Um, Always answer phone calls from Jamie and Courtney and Justin. Could be important. Um, so, let's see. Um, it is the 15th. Um, getting a good roll into the weekend. It's supposed to be a nice weekend this weekend. Um, temperature is supposed to be nice. Uh, next weekend, it's going to cool down, though. Next week, it's going to cool down. Uh, we've been seating outside all the way up. It's been a fantastic run. Uh, last night, our garden was packed last night uh, we were on a wait list last night if you had not made a reservation if you were walking we were on a wait list we turned a couple of tables away um or sorry if you were one of those tables that we turned away um and if you we couldn't get takeout to you we turned you away sorry with that um we're just we're busy thursday nights so we take advantage of any busy night that we get and we apologize we'd love to take everybody uh we'd hate to turn anybody away um so let's see i want to talk about the latest food challenge uh, there's actually two food challenges, two ingredients now that we just can't buy as restaurant owners. Um, and it's really, really frustrating. And one of them is one of our best-selling dishes for, oh, about 18 years. Uh, we have never had a problem with this. And we're having a problem with one of the items right now that we've been buying for 18 years. And one of the other items that I don't know why there's a shortage on it, but it's tomato juice. Like, tomato juice is, like, in short supply right now. Sure, it's out there on the shelves and things like that, but... Um, it's not as it should be stocked. I had to run to a restaurant depot today uh, for some to-go containers and a couple of things, and um, the whole tomato juice section there was empty. Shelves were empty. And what prompted me was I saw one guy pushing a cart with literally 10 cases of the big cans of tomato juice, 10 cases he had on his, on his cart. I'm like, wow, this guy's stocking up. I was like, I wonder what's going on, because obviously it's a natural um, reaction when there's nothing there or there's or they're stocking the shelves and you can buy something that you stock up and so i was taking a walk to that aisle and there's no small cans of tomato juice no big cans of tomato juice and i said to the guy they go what's up with tomato juice he goes i don't know we're barely getting tomato juice right now i was like oh okay um and i said well you know at that he i'm calling him another he goes we haven't gotten a shipment of tomato juice in probably a week and so uh, when I placed another one of my orders today, I said, you get tomato juice? And they're like, uh, nope, good luck on that. I'm like, oh, boy, here's another item that we're facing short supplies, tomato juice. But here's the big kicker for us. Here's the massive kicker for us. Our tuna that we've been serving for 18 years here, our tuna, um, the albacore, and then sometimes we'll switch to ahi when we can't get the albacore. Um, we can't get either one right now. Neither one of them are available. Um, I spoke to the, to the seafood manager today at one of the distributors we buy from, and he was like, "Marcus, there's nothing out there. We're not going to get, we're not going to get the searing tuna back in stock until middle of December. Middle, that's two months from now." He goes, "We'll have a supply of larger tuna loins, um, you know, you can cut tuna steaks out of and things like that. We'll have those in the middle of November. We're a month out from that." And two months out from the searing, the ahi, the good ahi tuna, I was like, oh, my gosh, that is, like, crazy. So when I was in Restaurant Depot this morning, I asked the seafood manager. I said, you got tuna, searing tuna? I looked at him, he goes, <laughs> he laughed. I go, no. He was like, oh, no, no searing tuna. There's no searing tuna here. He goes, we haven't had any, and we don't know when we're getting it. So um, if you go to a restaurant, if you go to a restaurant and they have tuna, 
um, they're lucky. So um, we buy a very specific type of tuna. We ride by these albacore loins um, that um, our fish distributor, Alaska Gold, they actually stopped carrying them. They go, we're not going to do and do those anymore. We just can't. We just can't be competitive in that game anymore. Um, there's just not enough out there for that. So they dropped that line. Um, so then we were switching to use this ahi tuna, and um, our regular source of ahi tuna is gone for right now and for two months, two full months. The good news is Mahi Mahi is in great supply right now. And so we're going to switch uh, that tuna dish over to the ma- a Mahi Mahi dish with the roasted tomato salsa. Um, so we're excited about that. So that will be happening um, today because there's no tuna here. We have no tuna. We served our last tuna last night was our last portion of tuna. So no tuna. Um, and the prices of things are still going up. I mean, I when I walk in the restaurant depot, I take pictures of prices and and – because I want to, like, I want to compare things like because um, a lot of the ingredients that are there we don't typically use because they're um, not as sustainable or not as organic or not as natural. And there are a few products that we do use here. Don't get me wrong, there are some products that that do fit in. They have a great organic greens, really awesome organic greens, um, and um, some of the cheeses they have there are great. Um, they used to carry a great grass-fed beef line that they don't care anymore because nobody, nobody in Newburgh was buying it. Some of the other restaurant depots, like the bigger ones, like in Hackensack and sometimes in um, Blauvel, um near Nyack, they have a market for restaurants will actually buy that. But here up here in Newburgh, nobody was buying the more expensive um, stuff, so they got rid of it, and it was a big bummer for us. Um, let's see. Um they were out of rags too, like regular like rags. Like I was gonna go buy some more rags to um um uh like our, our polishing rags for our glasses. And not only was the was the rack empty this time, but the whole rack was gone. I was like, um polishing rags? They're like, Nope, no polishing rags. When are they coming? Nope, don't want no idea. So when you walk through restaurant depot, like they've maneuvered a lot of things around in the store because the shelves are just some of the, some of these skews, some of these items are totally. You can walk down up and down the whole aisle for plastic cups, and the whole aisle is just empty. Like there's no pla- there's no plastic cups there whatsoever. So they keep rearranging things to fill things in. Um, so it's interesting. Every time I go, there's like it's like and the shelves are rearranged in certain areas. Um, let's see. It is Friday. We are open tonight. Open in the garden. Uh, we got a new Cabernet in tonight um, that I'm really awesome, um, really excited about. It's one of the vineyards we were at in Spain, in Ugarte, Green Ugarte. We got their Cabernet in by the glass. Our Vitiano Cabernet we've been pouring by the glass for many, many years. Since 2009, we've not missed a break of it. Um, we can't get that. Um, it's just, it's the importer. Um, they switched importers in this January, which was a blow to us. The new importer... Didn't quite get it in in enough time. Um, still doesn't have it in. Uh, the old importer saved us cases. We literally had the vice president from Winebow on this task with us and saved us as many cases as they could. And we were able to drag through it as long as possible. But the Vitiano is gone right now. It's not even in the country right now. Um, so poor Falesco, uh, the Cotarella family, they have not had their wines in the country represented for... Well, now it's going into November. It's been almost 11 months, and their wines have not been represented here. Um, and we're a major market for them, so I feel really bad for them. Um, something happened with their importer back in beginning of the first of the year, and it was um, lights out for their for their wine. They weren't able to get anything in. Um, let's see. Uh, so the Ugarino Garte Cabernet is in. Excited about that. You know, we sent out an email yesterday. I sent out an email yesterday. If you were on our list that um, you opened the previous email about the Finger Lakes tour, we have l- – there was a confusion when I sent the first email out with how many rooms we had left at the Harbor View, and we th- had one more room than we thought we have at, after all the dust settled, after we sold all the, all, 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 the, all the stuff from the first email. We have one more room, and we don't, kind of, don't want to really give it up because um, – I mean, the hotel wants us to give it up because they're going to – put it right back on the market and make another $100 a night on it, easily $100 a night. We secured these rooms back in March uh, for this upcoming trip. So, uh, But even in March, the rooms were more money. And now if you go to book these rooms, they're insane. If we were to do this Finger Lake trip again, it's $865 per person if you're paying cash or check. There's a fee on there if you use credit cards or vice versa, however that legally stated is. So um, we... Um, 
if we booked that trip again now for March or April, like we were going to do it in the springtime, um, that $865 trip would probably be $1,000. That's how much things are going up up there. The busing situation up there, they raised the busing on us. The limo bus, they raised $600 per day. Um, that's a $1,200 increase. So if you literally have 12 to 14 people, 14 people on your trip, that's almost another $100 a person in just busing, which if it's eight sixty five dollars a person, do the math, that's $100 more per person just to cover that. And the rooms are another $100 a night per person. So you see how this is flowing. So the, the economics of this um, trip um, are getting much, much less profitable for us, um, and we have to keep raising prices. So if you're interested in going to the Finger Lakes with us, we literally have one spot left um, at the 865 pricing. We don't know what we're going to do again, what we're going to do in the springtime. We don't, we don't know what the market's going to look like. We have no idea. As more and more people get to travel to Europe, uh, of course, and more people travel to Mexico and things like that, to the Caribbean, this part of our country will ease down on the supply. Um, we'll have more supply of hotel rooms, which means the prices will drop. But we're just not sure when that's going to happen, right? We just really don't know any of that, when that's going to happen. So that's unfortunate. But if, uh, like I said, the prices are going up and up. Um, we just announced our trip to Mexico, uh, April 2nd to the 9th or 3rd to the 9th, something like that. It's six days, six to seven days. Um, $5,500 a person, all inclusive from San Diego on. Um, it's going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing trip. Jamie and I were there. We were so impressed. We're going back um, to make sure that we know the best burrito, lobster burrito place in Ensenada. We back to, we're going back to make sure that we've got everything wired for that trip, but we know where we're going. We had an amazing time, and we're going to do it again. So stay tuned. That is now officially announced. It's now posted on our websites, or it will be posted on our websites. Um, that is going to be an amazing trip, $5,500. We'll do offer an early bird special. So literally, if you wanted to call me today and say, I want to book that trip, we're going to literally... Um, We'll take 500 bucks off uh, for the first few people that book that. We can only take 14 people. That's it. So seven couples and Jamie. I'm sorry, six couples. Six, so 12 people and Jamie and I, 14 people. That's what the bus holds. We don't want to do 28. We want to stay at 14 of the smaller bus. Um, that makes it much easier to tour. You're literally taking a private tour through Mexican wine country with, with Jamie and I. Um, and it's going to be an amazing, amazing trip in April. So check that out. 5500 bucks a person. If you get in early, uh, you'll start seeing emails on that. There will be an early bird discount. But if you called me right now, and literally, I've already got a couple seats sold because some of our Italian travelers moved, travelers moved over because we had to cancel our trip to Italy in April. Some of our Italian travelers will um, moved over. So we probably don't have many at that at all. So I don't know how many early bird specials I can give. Uh, but that's it, folks. That's all, it for now. I've got to get back to work. Um, I got people texting me, calling me, more messages coming in. I think I have a delivery here. And I'm all by myself right now. I'm all by myself here in the office. Uh, so that's it, folks. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later.